obviously sightseers are about a couple who go on a holiday and brutally murder loads of people. When you first sort of were approached for this, you must have thought this is this is right up my street. Yeah, I mean that was you know when I looked at it, I felt that it fitted really well with down terrorists and kill this. You know, sightseers made a logically made it was the right thing to do after those movies. I felt you know, but also it took concerns that were in the first two films, but then looked at them through a kind of comedic lens. So. It wasn't too much like it was a, a repetition. Of course, this is the first of your, your three films you haven't written and directed. Uh, was it always going to take something quite special to kind of lure you in and persuade you to join forces and sort of go in with someone else's project, so to speak? No, not, not really. I mean, it was more that, it, 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 you know, I'm pretty pragmatic about the, the projects that I do and it, and, I'll, and, it, and, it, and it was offered to me. I'm like, God, yeah, why would I, why didn't, would I not do it, you know? And, you know, I see a lot of scripts that aren't, you know, not my cup of tea. So it's nice to read something that you go, oh, okay, I understand these people and I'm behind them and I want to make the film. But also it was because I knew Alice and Steve as much as anything. And I wanted to um, work with them and I wanted to make a movie where I knew that we could do a lot of improvisation and then um, work that back into the into the movie. So the, the, we always saw the script as a kind of jumping off point. I interviewed them uh, last week as well and they were speaking about how great it was to work with you and obviously I'm sure it's vice versa. Are they people you'd like to work again with sometime? Perhaps if they were to write a future screenplay you'd like to get on board? Yeah, we'll see how it goes, yeah, yeah. I mean it certainly was pretty, you know, it was pretty smooth going the whole the whole procedure. So yeah, it was good. And obviously they, they know the characters inside out, I think they've been in their minds for about 10 years now. Did it help to work with actors and, and well, writers of course, who know this story inside out and they know their characters so well as well? well? That was one of the main reasons for doing it. It's that kind of thing of that with improvisation, you, I mean, I've worked a lot with improvisation and it's great for kind of rubbing the edges off scripts and stuff, but when you go out away from the script, away from paraphrasing it, the, the actual individual scenes can be fantastic, but, the, but whether you can actually put them in the movie becomes harder and harder because they go so away from the, the central core themes of the stuff. And I felt that working with people who'd, you know, perform, writer performers that had been involved in it from the very beginning, then that kind of improvisation would be much easier to, to marshal, uh, and, and, and it worked. So were they given much license on set to, 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 to improvise? And, and yeah, like yeah, absolutely. I mean, what I did was um, they'd be, we'd, we'd start scenes really early and then they would, you know, like two or three minutes early. So there'd be a load of improvisa improvisation and then, then we'd do the scene and then, then they'd improvise out of the scene. Or we'd do things like in the mornings, I'd kind of just write down, look at this, what we were shooting that day and then write down a series of like little vignette types of scenes and see if we could shoot those as well and they wouldn't be scripts per se but they'd be like notes saying uh, like say when we shoot in the house like um, Chris kisses Tina in her bedroom so that one line became all the scenes that happened in her room the lying on the bed and all that chatting was it kind of come out of that that little note and you really find yourself rooting in a way for Chris and Tina and when they sort of kill someone you almost feel like cheering is that was that the desired effect you wanted from the audience or uh, should I be a bit worried about myself no, I think that the you know that was the the reaction I had from this when I read the first read the script and thinking well you know they do they they're doing things I'd never do because a I'm not brave enough and b I'm a kind of moral character um, but I kind of want to do those things but I never would do it because I'd be afraid of getting arrested or beaten up or killed or whatever you know and they're wrong um, so but individually those moments are almost supportable and that's the kind of thing where the audience goes oh, yeah i suppose but but then when you have them one after the other it becomes this this you know this terrible kind of rampage that they go on and was it were there any many challenges at all in making them the kind of the good guys and making these two sort of murderers people that you can relate to was that quite a difficult task as a director i think you just have to be careful about the tone of it and how and, that, and make sure they're not malicious or they're not you know, there's an explanation for why they're the way they are, and so they display different types of behaviour all the time, so they don't become too one note. I think that was always the worry that if you, if you just make them, I mean, you basically end the the, the far end of this kind of um, uh, of of this graph would be um, a Henry portrait of a serial killer, where you get that kind of incredible, just blank faced, psychopathic performance, and and he's, I mean, you know, you're watching that film because you're fascinated by his behavior but you're terrified of him and you don't that's what we didn't want you know you want to you want to wants to be the other way where you're warm to the characters you kind of understand what they're doing but occasionally you're pulled back out of the film to judge what you know to make a dis moral decision whether it's right or wrong and as for yourself have you ever been on sort of caravan holidays before could we be able to join any of your own experiences in that regard 
Um, I've been on plenty of camping holidays, yeah, but I've never I've never been in the caravan. Um, so you know, maybe I'm a fraud in that respect, <laughs> but <laughs> but I certainly know what it is to uh, go to campsites, yeah. And the film it does manage to actually sort of show off uh, England in quite a beautiful light, in a sense. Was that mm. a, a deliberate move, or was it, is that just because of the quite sort of scenic um, location spots that were chosen? Well, Britain is b beautiful, you know, that's a fact. <laughs> so we we just filmed it. I mean, it was kind of what I wanted to do was that I'd made two movies that were quite interior, and I wanted to get out into a bigger space, and. Um, and have a bigger canvas and, and deal with people who aren't, you know, it's not a series of close-ups and mid-shots and um, claustrophobic rooms. So, yeah, that was good. And also we we approached the film knowing that the weather was not it's entirely uncontrollable. And so once you've accepted that and you film in the pouring rain or you film in the fog, occasionally you'll get really amazing sunlight as well. So, it, it, you know, it kind of gave, it was give and take on that. But the film, it does, it, it, well, compared to your, your previous two features, there is that, it does sort of portray Britain as being quite a demonic place in a sense. Hmm. Is that, are you trying to tell us something? Um, I think that the, you know, we do live in, a, in an ancient island, don't we, where all sorts of stuff has happened. I, don't, I think it's, it's modernity, which is the kind of the thin crust of uh, reality that sits on top of us that makes us feel safe. Of course, you have sort of travelled the world with sightseeing and the whole sort of festival circuit. It must have been great fun for you and, and the rest of the cast and crew. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's always a, a, a privilege to go to these places and be invited out to, to various festivals, and and it's also interesting showing the move a movie that is, well, we're showing a comedy with subtitles on, which effectively you're doing when you're going well, to someone like Cannes, and seeing how you know it's slightly nerve wracking to see how the French will react to it, but you know, it went really well. And do you find that they're laughing in all the right places, or have they got a slightly different sort of sense of humour? I think with a comedy, everyone laughs in different places. You can go to 10 different performances and you'll find different laughs for different jokes and that's and that's kind of encouraging I think. But despite uh, obviously touring the world with this film, are you sort of most sort of nervous slash excited about sort of finally releasing it to your home audience? Um, yeah of course you know you, there's no, no nothing is certain in film so you, you could you know apart from people not even liking the film you could have a massive heat wave that weekend and that ruins you you know so it is all it's uh it's all heart in mouth stuff but um i i'm i don't know i've been to a lot of the preview screenings and they've gone really really well so as far as that goes i know that the film's good so anything else that happens i'll blame everybody else yeah. not me <laughs> uh, and just finally, it's sort of compulsory. What are you up to now? Are you working on anything else? Can we expect to see a film from you in the near future? Yeah, we've just finished shooting um, uh, A Field in England, which is an English Civil War movie, and that should be done for the new year, yeah. hopefully. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for your time. Cheers, man. Thanks. Appreciate.